Hello, hello, hello. You are tuning into another episode of The Wonderkin Show. And this is the recap. So for all the people that are subscribed to the channel, um, you guys know I did a live today, my very first live. And we watched the game together. We broke it down. We watched it. It was ups. It was downs. It was exciting. It was crazy. It was headaches. But this is the recap. And we're going to break down what that game was beginning to end and what we need moving forward, what we're hoping for moving forward, and what we need to do, uh, changes that need to be made. Uh, first change. Fire Greg Roman! Like, straight up. Like, straight up. I am so tired of him at this point. Let me tell y'all what this guy did. For those who did not watch the game, you have healthy J.K. Dobbins, who was averaging 8.8 .8 yards a carry. Okay. You had Gus Edwards, who was averaging 6 yards a carry. Mm, yeah, okay. You got Patrick Ricard, mm, yeah, 400-pound behemoth, right? And just in case if that was enough, you got Kenyon Drake, right? Who has had, what, 200-yard rushing games this season. Do you know what this man decided to call? QB Power! Why? Why? And literally got Huntley knocked out of the game. While you're up there, you're seeing clearly that the Steelers are trying to smash us. Huntley took a big shot before that. He's like, oh, yeah, it's going to be all right. Oh, yeah, the Steelers, oh, yeah, run him right at the gut. Oh, yeah. They tried to kill him. While he was being pulled down, like, they came and tried to clear him. You thought that that was smart. On a fourth and one, it's not like the game is on the line, right? You need the one yard, right? Put Ricard. He falls for two yards. Gus Edwards. I don't know, J.K. Dobbins. No, you run the quarterback who is the backup to Lamar Jackson, who we are leaning on to be healthy enough to weather the storm while Lamar, right, gets healthy. And you put him in harm's way. Casually, I might add. Okay, that's number one. Number two, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards are absolutely a top three running back duo while healthy. And that's fact. That is fact. You can't even argue it. You can't even argue it. They, when those two are at their best, my God, they're just something to behold. And they ran for well over 200 yards today. Well over. Um. Yeah. Those two, I can't wait to see what them healthy looks like with Lamar. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Because <laughs> to stop that running game, that three-headed beast in J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, and Lamar, and then what would that do? Open up the pass game because people are going to be running wide open. Wide open. Because you know what they're going to have to do? Double mark. I actually can't wait to see it. Um, that was the biggest takeaway. That was another big takeaway. Number three, the another another big takeaway is our defense gives up too many big plays. Now, the defense what had three interceptions today. Yeah, three. One by Roquan, one by Patrick Queen, one by Marcus uh um Williams, right? They played great. But we give up too many big plays. Now, look, this is the NFL. Plays are going to happen. You know that it's not going to be shutouts. This is not the 80s or the 90s or even the early 2000s. This is not that, that football league anymore. And that's understandable. My problem is, it's not like, look, when you have this much talent on the defensive side of the ball, and you know Mitchell Trubisky is the opponent in which you have to to garner yourself against. That shouldn't be a problem. Matter of fact, their starter who was knocked out after the what? Second series of the game. 
isn't something that should have put 10 points on us. But no matter, the defense did their job. They held it, and you know what we did? We played great defense and ran the ball. I don't mind. I don't mind when Lamar's not in that we win like that. Matter of fact, if we're in the playoffs and it, and it gets us a win, I don't mind that. Because some games, you're going to have to run the ball and just play great defense. I don't mind games being like that. It can't be every game, though. <laughs> that's the problem, right? So that's the next big three. We give up way too many big plays. And the last big takeaway, what does the referees have against Baltimore? No, 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 no. Like, I need to know this now. Straight up. Because every time there is a call to be made, it usually, 80% of the time, goes against us. They called. <laughs> there was a guy in the slot that moved, right? And then our guys jumped. They said, oh. <laughs> Neutral zone infraction. <laughs> and they showed it. They said, wow, they got away with two of them. Okay. And then the very next play called another one. Back-to-back -back neutral zone infractions on the Ravens. And then... I'm not going to lie to you. Mar Mar Listen, Marlon got cooked. He got cooked like a fresh batch of lo mein at 12 p.m. on a Friday in a Chinese restaurant. That's how bad he got cooked. And if anybody knows, lo mein at midday goes very, very fast. But there was two plays where they called pass interference, and I'm like, that's not pass interference. That's ridiculous. Right now, we are second in the league in pass interference calls. That's ridiculous. That's 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 ridiculous. And if you're looking at them like, bro, that's not pass interference. There was a play even when the guy, the play was done. Marcus Peters is walking, looking at the other guy. And the other guy just takes a shot, shot on him. Right in front. The referee's looking at him like this. And the ref did nothing. So, okay, guy hit oh. He goes, oh, 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 hey, 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 you can't retaliate. So my thing is, we might as well coach our guys to make the first hit. We might as well, because we always get in trouble for doing the second. Cheap hit should be what we, we, we yep, cheap hit, bum. Oh, why did you hit me back? Because these referees are, are, are getting on my nerves at this point. They're horrible calls. First downs, no, 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 it's fourth and inch. It's like, bro, he reached for it. The ball cleared ah, 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 at fourth and inches. Sickening. Sickening. It was so funny, too, because the one time we decided to go for it on the... Well, we got it on one time for fourth down, but then he felt like, oh, yeah, we can do it again, and did it and got Huntley hurt, and we never went for another fourth down play for the rest of the game. He was like, oh, yeah, we ain't doing that no more. <laughs> we is not doing that no more. And shout-outs to um, Huntley, hopefully... You get healed up, my boy. You know what I'm saying? Heal that. You know what I'm saying? Get your rest. You know, take your vitamins. You know, I hate to see people get knocked out of games and get injured and stuff like that. It's a sad thing. But it's football, but you never like seeing it. You know what I mean? Huntley was trying his best, and I got nothing but love for him. You know what I'm saying? I got nothing but love for Huntley. He's just not Lamar. That's all. But um, those are my four biggest takeaways from this game. Those are my four biggest takeaways. Um, Greg Roman needs to go. We give up way too many uh, big plays from the defense. Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins are a top three running back duo in the league. And the referees are literally suicide bombers every time we play because they try to make game change. Bro, the Steelers move the ball on us almost 70 yards in like three or four plays because of penalties. Phantom penalties. Phantom penalties. <laughs> you think I'm joking? Go watch. Listen. Go watch the re. Go watch the rerun or the rewind, whatever they call it. You're gonna be like, are you serious? Ridiculous. But all in all, here's the thing. It's a it's a December game. It's cold. Um, it's a rivalry game. Us versus the Steelers. You know what I'm saying? And not just rivalry game. It's a divisional game. So, it, it, there was so many nuanced stuff to this. Both starting quarterback to this game got knocked out by concussions. Both. To show you how they were hitting in this game. And we, listen, the, that was the hardest hit we did was the Roquan one. Where he tried to escape. He escaped Patrick McQueen and Roquan brought him down. And brought him down kind of hard and then he hit his head. And, you know, he got brought out for concussion protocol. You know what I'm saying? But, 
them them Steelers were. I mean, they were trying to take people's heads off. They wanted them to make take ice baths after man. I, them them guys after that drilling is gonna be sore. But guess what? This is what we call a dirty win, right? Where the defense are running the ball and we we eat that a win. I can respect a win like this. I can respect a win like this. Because not every win has to be high flying. Not every win is going to be high flying. But we went in there to a divisional foe, a divisional rival. And you know what we said? We're coming out with this W. And we grinded and we made plays that needed to be made. And we won the game. That's all that matters. That W, we, yeah. And the Bengals, bro, the Browns, y'all had one job. One job. Beat the Bengals. You couldn't do it. You couldn't do it, huh? Seriously? Why? <laughs> Yo. Man, like. <laughs> people are going to be flaming me. You're rooting for Deshaun Watson? Uh, If he can knock out the Bengals? Yes. <laughs> Yo, I wanted that man to knock them out. <laughs> Crazy thing is, though, Tyler Boyd went out. And Higgins went down with a hamstring. That means two of their top three receivers will be out maybe the next game. If it's just Chase, you could key in on Chase. You could key in on Chase. Mm. Mm. We're going to get to see what happens in the next game. But guess what, guys? It still ended up being good. We got the W. We're still leading our division. We handled business. Now on to the Browns. Now on to the Browns. <laughs> and that's another episode of the Wonderkin Show. You guys can be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with me. And you know I forever will appreciate that. Please remember, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. This is not hard. It's very easy. It helps the algorithm. It helps me build the channel so I can give you more content. And if you're watching this channel, I know you love this content. <laughs> yes. So, that was another episode of the Wonderkin Show. This is Nitro signing off. And you guys know my slogan. Peace. And I am out. Dub. <laughs>